Welcome to another Simple Science video and in this video we are going to be looking at band theory. Okay, so what is band theory? Band theory is the study of how electrons behave within a material or specifically within an atom, within a solid semiconductor materials atom. Okay, now one of the most important things that we must introduce uh, before we talk about band theory is the atom. And this is one of the earliest models of the atom. This is known as the Bohr model of the atom. It is a planetary model of the atom whereby electrons exist like planetary orbits around a central nucleus, okay? And one of the earliest, earliest understandings of how electrons existed relative to an atom is that they existed at fixed energy heights at each level, okay? So that means at each level, they only existed at one orbit radius, okay? So there couldn't be a variation in orbit radius at each level. And this was due to an assumption that all of these atoms were isolated from each other. I will explain it in more detail later on using the help of a diagram. But one of the earliest assumptions was that these atoms were isolated from each other and they are not, they cannot interact with each other. There are no forces on each other, okay? But as we know, in reality, atoms are not isolated from each other. They're actually quite close to each other. And as a result, they will actually interact with each other. And how they interact with each other is based on how the electrons uh, will be varied in orbit radius, as I said before, okay? And to, in order to explain this, I must introduce the concept of an electron energy diagram. This is basically a diagram that represents, at each energy level, the exact number, the exact energy in which electrons can exhibit, okay? And there's a very, very important region in the electron energy diagram known as the conduction band. And this is basically a region whereby electrons can gain enough energy to leave their shells and, and become conductive or free and delocalized as we more commonly hear in chemistry. Now, for an isolated atom, as I said before, there's going to be no influences on um, it. There's no, going to be no influences from anything else or from other atoms. And so as a result, at each energy level, there's only going to be one possible state in which electrons can exist. And I represent the one possible state at each energy level as one line at each energy level, as you can see there. These are discrete singular lines at each energy level. But now if we start to consider more atoms, there's going to be more sources of influence. So for example, in this case, there's going to be three different atoms and they're going to interact with each other in three different ways. So as a result, at each energy level, there's going to be a slight variation in the possible number of energy states or energies in which electrons can exist. So for in this case, we have three atoms interacting with each other. We are going to now have three different possible states at each energy level, okay? Now, if we start to consider more atoms, there's going to be more sources of influence. So as we increase the number of atoms, we increase the number of influences, and at each energy level, we increase the number of possible energy states in which these electrons can exhibit. So as you know, in a material, we're looking at a very, very large number of atoms. So they will be interacting with each other in a pretty much infinite possible number of ways. Well, within uh, certain limits. So as a result, instead of drawing a million or a very, very large number of possible states at each energy level, I'm going to congregate all of these lines and form regions instead of a bunch of these lines. And these regions are called bands. Okay, so at each energy level, there's going to be bands. And as I said before, the topmost band in our atom is known as conduction band. This is where electrons can become conductive. And we look, and the two main bands that we are most considered, we, we are most interested in are the valence band and the conduction band, whereby the valence band is the non-conductive band immediately below the conduction band, okay? So, as I said before, these are the two most interesting bands that we're going to consider in our uh, band theory analysis and the valence band basically contains valence electrons and these are electrons that are the outermost electrons of an atom and they're responsible for the chemical and physical properties of a uh, the element okay and what's great about these two bands is that electrons can jump from the valence band to the conduction band and back okay with uh, the specific amount of energies and when they do jump uh, to and from each of these bands, they will actually in, uh, influence the conductivity of our semiconductor. So as engineers, this region is very powerful because we can use the fact that they can jump between them, 
with a process called doping in order to influence the conductivity of our semiconductor. And the ability to influence the conductivity of our semiconductor is the key to electronics. So now I'm going to introduce another concept known as the Fermi level and the Fermi probability. So although we cannot accurately estimate the exact number of electrons that exist inside the conduction band or inside the, in the valence band, we can, however, estimate the exact probability in which electrons can exist between, uh, between each of these bands based on a level that exists between that band, those two bands, known as the Fermi level. The Fermi level exists between these two bands, and the Fermi-Dirac function will tell you the probability of electrons existing b above this level. Okay, So this function will calculate the probability of electrons existing within the conduction band and within the valence band. You know, uh, one minus the other. Okay, so this function is based on two main variables. First is the energy at which you want to find the probability at, and the temperature. So that's the absolute temperature of the, the condition that you want to apply. So that is known as the Fermi Dirac function. And using this function, you can actually infer two very important characteristics of semiconductors. The first is that the greater the temperature, the greater the probability of electrons existing above EF. So the greater the temperature, the greater the number of electrons in the conduction band. And hence, the greater the temperature, the greater the conductivity of your semiconductor. And the other extreme is that when T is equal to zero or at absolute zero, no electrons can exist above EF. Or at absolute zero, your semiconductor cannot conduct. So if I were to graphically represent our Fermi Dirac function, you can see that at absolute zero, there is no probability that electrons can exist above the Fermi level. But as you start to increase the temperature, you can see that there's going to be an increasing probability that electrons can exist in the conduction band. Now there's a region between the conduction band and the valence band whereby electrons cannot exist, and this is known as the forbidden gap. However, if you introduce the Fermi Dirac function into the forbidden gap, you can, you can actually find out a non-zero value for the probability. Or in other words, if you apply the Fermi Dirac function into the forbidden gap, there's going to be a probability that electrons can exist. However, there's a far more important concept in physics that we must understand, and that is the concept of the density of states. This basically determines the n number of possible states per interval of energy. In this branch of physics, we're going to be looking at electron density at each region. And there are two main equations based on two different boundary conditions whereby electrons exist. And these two equations, let's look at the first one. This equation is based on energies that are below, uh, be above EC. And EC is the lowest energy in the conduction band. And if you insert a value of E that's greater than EC, you will get a non-zero value for density of states. Or in other words, the volume density of states is not zero. That means electrons can exist above EC, which makes sense because electrons can exist in the conduction band. However, the other statement says that when you insert values that are lower than EC, the value of density of states is immediately zero. Or in other words, there's going to be a region below EC in a semiconductor whereby electrons cannot exist. And this is known as the forbidden gap. This is the region whereby electrons cannot exist. And that is the forbidden gap. Okay. Now if we start to look at the um, electron energy diagrams for each of the three main categories of materials, you can see that an insulator has the largest energy gap, followed by the semiconductor, and then followed by conduct a conductor which has no energy gap. And this is because the conduction band will actually overlap with the valence band. And therefore, electrons won't have to gain any energy at all at any temperature, maybe apart from abs uh, well, at any temperature whereby basically electrons don't have to gain any energy at all to become conductive. And if you apply the Fermi Dirac function to each of these three categories of materials, you'll find out that the insulator has the lowest probability of electrons existing in the conduction band, and the conductor has the highest probability of electrons existing in the conduction band. Now there's a process that, as I said before, will, that will actually influence the conductivity of your semiconductor, and this is known as doping. And the material that we're going to influence the conductivity of is a semiconductor material known as intrinsic silicon or pure 
unadulterated silicon and this has a very very small forbidden gap of about one volts which allows for doping to take place okay and doping is scientifically defined as the act of improving the conductivity of a semiconductor and there are two main ways in which you can improve the semiconductor's conductivity and the first type is called n-type doping and this is known as negative doping whereby you insert atoms of different elements but of a similar radius but with one extra valence electron so as you can see in our little matrix there silicon is a group four element we want to insert a an element of a greater number of valence electrons so a group five element like arsenic and when you insert arsenic you will have extra electrons within your matrix and where do these excess or extra electrons go these extra electrons are going to be placed high up in the forbidden gap close to the for close to the conduction band where they can easily jump to and from the conduction band and this action right there that improves the conductivity of the semiconductor and the other type of doping is known as p-type doping and this is or this is known as positive doping where instead of using atoms of one more valence electron we use atoms of one less valence electron now instead of producing regions of excess electron electrons you're going to use regions of electron deficiency and these regions are known as positive holes and where do these holes go these holes lie close to the valence band and what's great about this is that this provides a different type of majority carrier and our electrons can jump from the valence band to these holes and back so that's another way in which electrons can conduct start start to conduct so if you allow another route of conduction you're improving the conductivity of your material okay so that's p-type doping so in this case the conduction band is untouched right now what happens if you join a p-type semiconductor with an excess of positive holes and an n-type semiconductor with an excess of electrons you actually form a region whereby um, electrons from the n-type semiconductor will migrate towards the holes of the p-type to form a depletion region formed of impurity plus and minus ions okay and these ions will actually generate an electric field and this electric field goes from the n-type to the p-type and this is basically the basis of a diode okay so as I redraw that electric field on top on the top left there now if we apply a potential difference with positive on the right we're basically dragging our electron that lies within the depletion region right there towards the right towards the end type now if you're dragging an electron towards a bunch of more electrons which it's going to be repulsed by you're basically uh, using a reverse bias configuration because these electrons will repulse or repel that electron that you're trying to drag over now if you try to drag your electron the other way using the applied potential difference although uh, if, hold on you are dragging it towards the p-type which is full of positive holes where it's going to be naturally attracted by you're going to experience a force that you will also experience in the forward bias configuration due to the depletion region so this force is represented by the white arrows this is due to that electric field that we talked about earlier okay so in order to drag it to the left you must first overcome the force due to this electric field and hence you arise a, a very familiar voltage or a very familiar minimum voltage that you must apply in order to overcome this depletion region electric field and this is commonly known as your 0 0.7 threshold voltage okay so that is the basis of the diode so to quickly summarize this video, we have discussed the origins of band theory from which we have used to discuss the concept of doping. And from the processes of some from the products that band theory and doping has given uh, rise to, we have discussed the operations of a diode, including reverse and forward bias configurations. So th thank you very much for watching this video. This is not an A-level or IGCSE revision video. This is, I don't know, this is... Uh, this is difficult science, but
it's it's just extra information when you come to study mechatronics or electronics later on in your career. So thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all the best in your revision.